In this video, we're going to create a solid linkage body from the sketch. Thanks everybody for tuning back in. At this point, if you followed along with the last video, then we created the base sketch for the linkage design. I do want to make a few notes before we get too much farther into this design, and they really come down to partially personal preference, partially some best practices, but I do think it's important that we do some house cleaning here. Anytime we create a new sketch, I feel it's important that we name it. It's very easy to get into the habit of just creating sketches, but if you're working collaboratively with somebody, or if you just are going to have a lot of sketches, it makes sense for us to rename them. Now to do this, we can select it in the what's called the browser on the left side, and then we can left click on it again. And I'm going to call this base link sketch one. Now I'm going to keep that sketch one term in there because I don't know how many sketches I'm going to have for this base link, but I want to just simply change the name to something meaningful. Another thing that's important is going to be the creation of components or bodies. Now there are many different ways to do this and there are many different theories on when you would use it and why you would use it, but as a general rule, it's good practice to create empty components very early in your design. And we started with the sketch because I felt like that was a point where we've already been before. We've already done some sketching, so it's a comfort thing. But there's also this empty component, this new component that we can create that's empty. Now, these are going to be required if we want mechanical motion. If we want to apply joints and have things move around, we're going to need components. So it makes sense that we create a component now. This can be done by extruding this first sketch. So if we create an extrude, we have the operation option to create a new component. And this is a perfectly valid way to do it. The operation option is there, and it does allow us to create that new component. I'm going to hit Cancel, and I'm going to check out the New Component option, which can be had at the Assemble menu, or you can also right-click at the top of your design and create a new component there. So as we're looking at this, we can create it empty or from existing bodies in the design, we can give it a name right here, and we can decide what its parent is going to be. The parent-child relationship is going to determine where it gets placed in the browser in, in your design. At this point, we really only have the top of our design, which is going to be lead linkage version 1, so there really is no extra selection that would have to happen. I'm going to cancel this as well because there are some more notes that I want to make. The timeline at the bottom is a capture of the history, what you did in what order in the design. Assuming this is on, which it's not always on, you can turn it on and off, but assuming this is on, we can drag this marker back before the sketch. We can create a new empty component, and I'm going to call this base link, and I'm going to activate it and say OK. Now notice when I do that, my sketch disappears. It's completely gone. Now the reason it's completely gone is because the timeline is rolled back. If I go back and I activate this component and I drag this forward, that sketch is still there. It just happened at this point after the component was created. And because we didn't create the component and activate it and begin sketching, the sketch itself is not inside of the component. Right, so this is a very important point that I want to make because there are many different ways that we can create this part and many different ways that we can follow this process. We do have the option to drag and drop that into the base link. So if we expand it, now that sketch is in there. So if I activate it, you can see the sketch is now in the timeline. So oftentimes, especially with new designers or someone that's new to Fusion, you might just jump in and start creating that sketch and begin making everything and then realize you really wanted to start a component first. Now if you have that problem, just roll the timeline back, create that new empty component, then drag your sketch into it, problem solved. If you get farther down in the design, you start creating all these features, it gets a little bit more complicated and it's much harder to do. So try to remember early on in the design if possible, but you can convert bodies to components at any time. It just really does help with the organization and the structure of the design if you can do it as early as possible. 
So now that we have a component, the base link, we have the sketch in it, if we want to keep working in this, it's a good idea for us to activate that component. Once we have a design that has multiple components in it, that'll start to make a bit more sense why we're doing this. But in general, it changes the opacity of other components. It makes it easier for us to focus our attention on this one. For right now, we're going to just begin working with this body, and we'll come back to some of those topics later. From here, we're going to use Extrude, which is, again, shortcut E on the keyboard. I'm going to select the inner profile here, and I'm going to begin dragging it up with this arrow. I'm going to change my direction options to make it symmetric. I'm going to change the measurement to the whole length. And then I'm going to define the distance as a quarter inch, 0.25 inches. Anytime you're working in one of these parameter or option dialog boxes in Fusion, if you hit the Enter key in any of the dimension boxes or any of the feature creation, it's going to automatically OK that. So be sure that you are completely done with this whenever you hit OK or hit Enter. Once we create that, the sketch automatically is hidden based on user preferences. So we're going to click on the eye icon to the left of it to show it. And then we're going to create another extrude. This time I'm going to select the outside sections of these bosses. I'm going to begin to drag them up. Again, I want to use symmetric. And I'm going to define this as the whole length. And I'm going to set this equal to half inch and hit enter. Then I can go back and I can hide that sketch. If we expand the bodies folder, notice that we only have one body, body one inside of our base link component. If we get a little bit ahead of ourselves and we talk about things like detailed drawings and bill of materials for designs, the information that you see on a bill of materials is going to come from components in your design. The name of your component, the properties of your component, if we right click, we have physical appearances that can be applied. We have properties such as part number, part name, description. All that information is going to get carried on, not the name of the body. The name of the body is important, especially if you have a design with multiple bodies. But for right now, we're not going to rename that. We're going to focus our attention on the sketches as well as the component names themselves. So at this point, we could consider this done. We could continue to work with uh, this specific body if we wanted to, or this component, and then we could create more elements of the design. But if there's more that we want to do here, for example, if we want to take care of the intersection between these straight edges and the bosses, then we want to add some modification features. So in this case, we're going to add a fillet, we're going to select this vertical edge, and then we're going to begin to add a fillet. And depending on how large you actually need it to be, you can manually drag that arrow or you can enter some values. If you click on an edge and you modify the value of that radius, in order to add more edges you'll need to hold down the control or the command key depending on what type of system you're working on. And then you can work your way around. With Fusion you can select through solid geometry. Sometimes it can be difficult, but if you can hover your cursor over where you think that edge is, then you can add those. You can also rotate it around to any position you need to to get access to those edges. But holding down the control key will allow you to add more edges to that selection. Also note that in the fillet dialog box there is a plus icon. We can add additional fillets to this design. For example, if I wanted to fillet these edges with something much smaller like 0.125, then I could add that as a secondary fillet in the menu. I don't want to do that. I want to keep it as simple as possible. So I'm going to select Remove Selection and focus just on the larger ones and say OK. I'm going to go up to my View Cube and hit the Home icon to go back to my Home View. And now that I'm essentially done with this link for now, I'm going to go back to the top level and activate my component at the top level. I'm going to minimize the sketch and minimize the component. So I'm focusing just on this base link now. The next thing that I want to do is I want to create a new component, another link. Every time we have a new component, that component will have its own coordinate system. So we have our origin of the main design right here. It's focused around the center of that boss. Inside of our base link, if we expand this, we also have an origin for the base link. Now the origin with the base link is free to move about with it. That's how Fusion knows where this component is in relation to the top level or the main origin. 
So we're going to revert the position, put it back where it came from, but just note that each of these has its own coordinate system and any new components we create will also have their own. So we're going to create a new component. Again, from the assemble menu, I'm going to start a new empty component. I'm going to make sure that the parent is this top level. And then I'm going to give this new component a name. In this time, I'm going to call it the dog link. So this link, when we start to create a new component, we have some things that we really want to be careful with and we really want to understand in our design. Some of these things are whether or not we're going to be using the origin for that specific component or if we want to create some sort of relationship with something else. And what I mean by that is if we go to start a new sketch, it's automatically going to show me the origin for this component. But I could also create a new sketch on some design element of another body in the design. For example, if I select this face of this boss, we're automatically bringing a profile in. So you can see here that we have the ID and the OD of that sketch, and that's brought directly into the design that we're working with. What that also means is the origin of our design is not the center of the sketch. So there are design implications here. And as you're a new user coming to Fusion, or if you're completely new to CAD, that might not be instantly apparent why that would matter. For right now, you don't need to worry too much about it. I simply want to make sure that we pointed out that the first part, the base link we created, we focused about the origin. We used extrudes in the symmetric orientation so it went in both directions positive and negative and that's really the best approach that you want to take if there is a reason that you would need to start a sketch on another body to maintain a link between it then you do have that option I'm gonna do control Z to undo and I'm gonna go back to before I had that sketch created I'm gonna hide my base link and I'm gonna start a new sketch again on the same XZ point I'm going to start a circle at the origin. I'm going to draw a secondary one. I'm going to zoom out a bit and draw two more over here. And then I'm going to add a horizontal constraint between their centers. I'm going to hit escape on the keyboard. I'm going to apply a dimension to the center of this. And again, I'm going to use that parameter, bearing OD. So that's going to give me that one inch dimension. And then I'm going to put a value of a quarter inch between the outside of that. I'll do the same thing over here using that bearing OD parameter and then I'll give it that same 0.25. I'm going to keep it linked in this specific instance to the first circle here, not the original sketch and the original design. And the reason is the outside diameter of the base link might need to be different than the outside diameter of this one. I don't have a parameter for it. I haven't defined anything. but in this case, I want to make sure that these two are the same. Then I'm going to draw a horizontal line. We can decide whether or not it's construction. So I can hit X on the keyboard or I can use the construction option here. And then I want to define the rest of this link. I'm going to do that by, again, drawing lines. If it automatically tries to snap to something you don't want to, remember you can hold down Control or Command to override those persistent constraints. I'm going to draw this line over here. It's made it parallel with that horizontal construction line, but this upper edge has been given a horizontal constraint. So I'm going to select that, delete it, and I'm going to use parallel as well. I want to make sure that I stay consistent with these constraints and the dimensions as I apply them. So I'll hit escape to get off that constraint. I'm going to use dimension. I'm going to decide how thick I want this piece to be. I'm going to say half inch up from that edge. And at this point, we have some decisions to make for our design. We could add some construction lines. We can come down, add another dimension and make them equal. We can link them together. Or we can add another constraint. So if we select this dimension and delete it, we have a symmetry constraint, which allows us to select elements that we want to be symmetric and then align for them to be symmetric about. So if we think about this as mirroring across that horizontal construction line, we can use that as an option too, and any of those are going to be okay. There are certain instances where that symmetry or a mirror constraint is going to make more sense than adding more dimensions, especially if you have uh, a small design or a tight design 
it could be beneficial to use constraints over dimensions, but really depending on how you're defining it, either will be okay. The last thing that we need to do is we need to define how far apart these are. I'm going to give them a six inch dimension and then I'm going to finish the sketch. Now we're going to extrude and again I'm going to use that symmetry option. I'm going to define it as the whole length and I'm going to make this quarter inch. So 0.25 and hit enter. We need to go back in again and show that sketch. Create another extrude for both of these bosses. Drag them up. Again we'll make them symmetric. We're going to define it by the whole length of half inch and we can hide the sketch now and say OK. If we show our base link, you'll notice that the base link, the opacity is changed to the point where it's probably somewhere around 10%. We can still see it, we still know it's in the design, but our focus or attention is on this new part that we're drawing. For right now, I'm not going to worry about any fillets. I'm going to go back to the top level. And I'm going to activate that top level component. What I want to do now is I want to apply a joint. Now this can be kind of tricky if parts are overlapping each other, but keep in mind that when we're applying these joints there are two types of joints that we can focus on. We can focus on an as-built joint if the part was modeled in place, or we can focus on a joint. Now the difference between these really depends on the component's position as it stands right now. We're going to use the joint option and the way that this works is we need to select the component in its position. So I'm going to select the bottom portion of the cylindrical face on the inside. Now if you have trouble selecting these, whenever your cursor is hovering over a face, in this case the inside diameter, you can hold down control or command to lock the focus and then you can navigate between the points that you can select. So notice that I selected that top point, and that's going to be the point in which the components are going to be aligned. For my second component, I want to select the bottom point. That's going to move it over, and they're shaking a bit because the motion on the second tab is automatically defined as rigid. I'm going to have that defined as revolute, which will allow them to spin freely around each other, and then I can say OK. If I try to move them here, it's not going to work because they're still both free to move. So I need to revert the position and I'm temporarily going to lock the position of my base link or we can go into the joint, we can right click on it and we can animate the joint. So these are two different ways in which we can focus our attention. I'm going to hit escape to stop that. But if we right click on the base link, we can ground it, which will lock it in place and then we're free to move this link about and make sure that everything moves how we would expect. I'm going to revert that position and it's important to note that grounding it places a feature in the timeline. So unless you really need to have something grounded like a mounting point or the base of a design, we want to make sure that we don't do that as a general rule, ground and unground, because it's just going to add features in our timeline. So now that we've created our second part or a second component, I'm going to go up to inspect. I'm going to toggle on component color cycling. This allows us to put some sort of a highlight over the features, the sketches, and the components themselves. So if we take a look at the timeline, we have two different main colors. These two different main colors represent two different components. The components, their color or appearance has changed. So it's very quick and easy for us to identify which features were used where. Every time we activate a component, we're going to focus on just those features that were used to create that component. Same thing with this dog link. We activate it. We're only seeing the sketches and features that were used for that. So this can be a really handy way to help visualize your assemblies, especially as they start to grow. From here, this is a great part for us to stop at. So we're going to save the design so we can move on to the next video in the next lesson where we continue to build out this assembly.